in a few moments we're going to have open for questions. I just want to uh, make a couple of comments on the practice first. And, uh, one of them is this. I get a lot of questions about rain, so I just wanted to clarify a few things. For those that... How many of you are really new to RAIN, are very unfamiliar with it? Can I see to the acronym? Yeah. So this is an acronym for mindfulness and compassion that's very useful when you're working with a challenging energy. And um, the original version of it, uh, the way I teach, it's actually different than the original version, which creates more questions. The R is to recognize. And that simply means, okay, you've been kind of off in a trance and you start realizing, oh, I've been, I've been out there. And then you realize, wow, there's some real anxiety in your system. So the R is to recognize it. Okay, anxious. And the A is allow, which means don't do something to it. Don't leave. Don't judge. Don't add anything more. Just allow. Just let it be as it is. Okay, and that creates a pause. And the pause enables a deepening of attention. I just want to say that everything about RAIN is already what you already know and already practicing. It's just a useful way to remind yourself. So you're just noticing it and letting it be there, allowing. And then the I is a deepening of attention. It's that inquiry, and it's a very essential part of sati, of, of, of mindfulness, of what is this? And it's not mental. It's very easy to think investigation as well. My mother treated me like this, and now I have a pattern of doing that to other people. It's not that, okay? It's more, okay, what is it really experienced like? What does it feel like in the body? It might include what am I believing. There might be a a mental idea of, oh, I'm always going to fail. And if you sense that, or I'm unlovable or whatever, then find out where it lives in your body. Keep coming back to your body. It's only when we bring a full presence to the felt sense in the body that there can be really uh, a release of the identification with the scales that we actually open, okay? So you're investigating where is it, how does it feel, what's it like? And as I mentioned last night, the deepest inquiry really is what does this place need? There's an unmet need when we're in a clench, when we're reactive. There's some basic need for love, for attention, for acceptance, for forgiveness. Something is going on. And when we can tap into that need with the investigation, we get to the end of RAIN, which is nurture, which is respond to what's here. From the most awake, tender, wise part of our being. And that's when I usually put my hand on my heart. Because for me, that's a very instinctual way. And there's a lot of science that says if you put your hand on your heart, the, the, the warmth uh, with this neural net that's right here actually calms down the sympathetic nervous system. Um, but it's a way of communicating presence to yourself. When we're in reactivity, we're feeling cut off and separate. So by communicating presence with yourself, you're connecting and soothing, and coming back into an integrated place, okay? So the nurturing can be in the form of sending a message of kindness to yourself. It can be, sometimes you feel too small to send it to yourself. You imagine the universe, uh, the bodhisattva of compassion, or your mother, or a friend, or whatever, sending it. But it's just nurture. Now, the important thing about RAIN is after you've gone through the steps, and there's some doing, with each of these steps. The key thing is afterwards to then rest and just notice what it's like. Just like with the real rain, when it comes down, the fruits of the rain are in the, in the blossoming that happens afterwards. Just stay and sense, you know, because you can almost viscerally feel that shift from being the anxious self to being the awareness and tenderness that is holding and with that, that, that anxiety. There's a shift in identity. In the old version of RAIN, the last, the end was not identify, but I felt like it missed the compassion piece. And the non-identification is not a doing, it's a resting in what is. You, you inhabit, remember I described the line, and above the line is awareness, you inhabit that awareness. 
Did you move from the dot to the hall, that vast, edgeless space, that field of tenderness that's really what we are? So I wanted to just kind of give you a sense again of how you can use rain if some strong energy comes up. And then lastly to say, don't miss out on giving yourself that gift of non-doing during practice. It can very easily become a project. So if you find a calming down, a quieting of the mind, you might just mentally, sometimes I'll just say, okay, stop. Or drop, that the Tibetan sometimes say, just drop, just let it all be. Because it's in the moment of pure non-doing that we actually dissolve the last remnants of identification with a separate self and just become that space of awareness. So I want to invite you to weave that into your practice. Anyone uh, this morning have something you'd like to bring into the room? We've got our Emma's here with the mic. My question relates to what you were just speaking of in terms of doing and not doing and knowing when which is a skillful means or the most skillful means. They're all skillful means. Something that's been coming up in my practice and in my life is this feeling of not being enough, which then leads to this fear of not belonging. Mm -hmm. And wondering how to know in myself when is the most skillful time to like be with it, bring rain to it, be compassionate with it, ask it what it needs. And when is the most, how to know for myself, when is the most skillful time to just let go and just almost to like, I see you, Mara. Like, I see this thing again coming up. Like, I'm not going down that road. Like, Mm -hmm. it's a lie. It's delusion. And I'm coming back to like the truth of my belonging or whatever. Mm -hmm. And have you experimented with the latter of just saying, um, thank you very much, but... Mm -mm. and that's a little bit of a doing and then just coming back to rest not really so experiment for every one of us you know we'll give a general here are the instructions but every body mind is is its own and so it's real this is really an experiment I find it an experiment almost moment to moment. On some level, there's like this, well, let's see, you know, is, is there some skillful way to be with this? Or, you know, experiment. And, and notice, you know, with the words uh, just let go, there's a little bit of a paradox because a self can't let go. And if you're very identified in a self, a self can try to will it or think it wants to but the very nature of selfing is a clutch. So letting go actually is when there's a awareness naturally isn't holding on. So the more there's a a resting in awareness, there's a spontaneous letting go and letting be. So sense for yourself in your experiment that sometimes you're going to be investigating and actively working with and sometimes that there's an intention to do less and just kind of rest with and, and experiment with how much that can be an open-handed process for you. And you'll find there's a going back and forth. That, there's, there, that you might sense, well, okay, just let that nurturing, let the, see how deep the love can be, and then just rest. You know, you'll, you'll find a, a weaving that actually is a very organic process of coming back home. Thank you. My question's about fear and anxiety. I met fear and anxiety about five years ago when my life got flipped upside down, and I really didn't have a lot of them before, so I'm learning, I'm trying to learn to work with them. I had lost my brother-in-law and my mother in um, one full swoop, and, um, and then my husband got sick. So it's been about five years of some vague illnesses, I have so much fear and anxiety around it, and I try to work with it. But in the work I do every day, I'm a nurse practitioner, I take care of really, really sick and hurting people Mm -hmm. every 15 minutes. So there's this reinforcing that this Mm -hmm. is what happens. Mm -hmm. And in working with your 
the grandmother self version of yourself, I found that really helpful and tried to understand what it was I needed. And she was wonderful and caring and reassuring. But when she got to the point about it's going to be okay, then there was a little, the voices came, said, no, it's not. You know it's not, because this is what you see every day all the time. It's so reinforced. Mm -hmm. And so where I got stuck is, is that okay to reassure yourself? Or do you really just want to sit with the acceptance of, we don't really know? I kind of know the answer as I'm saying it, <laughs> but and I'm just... What, what, what's your sense? Well, my sense is that we don't know, and we are supposed to live in the groundlessness, but where can you gain a little bit of that tenderness mm -hmm. to get yourself through it? Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful inquiry, and I, I feel like it's right at the heart of what we're all working with. Every one of us is working with fear. It's the, it's the primal clutch of the separate self. Every one of us is afraid of the losses that are inevitable, and we're tensing against it. And that on one level we're being invited to, like, just the only way to the fearless heart is through fear, is through actually opening to the clutch and opening with as much presence and care as we can. And in order to bring care to it, sometimes we have to very intentionally cultivate that sense of resourcefulness and care. In other words, that's the reason the Buddha taught the loving-kindness meditation initially, was to, that we really need to sense uh, the truth of our connectedness, that we belong to something larger. It's the love that can carry us through this coming-going world that if we don't sense our belonging to a really loving awareness in a big way, uh, we're going to constantly be a separate self that goes like this. So sometimes just to nourish that. And that's why that relating to the grandmother figure is a kind of metaphor for relating to that vast tender heart space that you really belong to. And the more you're familiar with that, the more you'll be able to bring to the presence of fear that tenderness. So again, there's a kind of a back forth here that I'm, that I'm referring to, and we talked about it with pain also, that we sometimes have to just resource till we get more familiar with our larger belonging. And then we go right into where the very essence of that tight, tense sensation is until we find in that presence, we can sense a kind of space and radiance and tenderness that is bigger than the tightness. Back and forth. Does that resonate as I say it? Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. It's an art, and it is, again, an experiment for each of us. If you're more on the traumatized end of the spectrum, more resourcing first before you go right for the rain. You won't get to the end of rain. You'll be re-traumatized before you get there if you haven't resourced. So in a way, what that means is that before you do rain, you do the more of the end of rain. You do more of the nurturing, and then you come in and do the rain, and you have more access. I hope I'm not confusing anyone. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, your questions are really, really beautiful. 